So here now, we'll have a discussion on Arantadir Rai's famous lecture entitled, Come September. Well, this September, the month of September, reminds us of the September the 11th attacks, also commonly referred to as the 9-11, a series of four coordinated terrorist attacks by the Al-Qaeda against the U.S. on the morning of Tuesday, September the 11th, 2001. You would remember four commercial airlines were hijacked by the terrorists. They took control of the aircraft and hit or crashed against the, the twin towers of the World Trade Center in the United States of America. Both the 110-story buildings collapsed uh, on the spot, uh, killing around 3,000 people and injuring 25,000 25, people and causing significant damage to property. Well, this 9-11 is perhaps the deadliest terrorist attack in the human history. Now, it is in this background that uh, Arantati Rai uh, talks about come September. Now, Arantati Rai, uh, you, you would remember, she's a novelist and essayist and an activist shot into fame with the winning of the Man Booker Prize for her maiden novel, the first novel, The God of Small Things in 1997. She is also the recipient of the Sydney Peace Prize in 2004 for her advocacy of non-violence. Well, come September, as I said at the, at the, at the outset, is a lecture that Arantadi Roy delivered on the 18th of September 2002 at the Lannan Foundation in Santa Fe in New Mexico in the United States. It is a scathing attack on corporate globalization, the U.S. foreign policy, and the so-called war against terror. Arantadi Roy is trying to expose the real terrorist. Now, she puts the question, who is the terrorist? Is it the so-called terrorist or, or something else? Uh, she means the state, the real terrorist, waging an unequal war against its opponents under the garb of, under the garb of a preemptive strike against terrorism. Well, she is, this is what she's trying to do. She's trying to expose the real uh, terrorist. Well, here's a summary of the the lecture in the first part Arantadi Roy says that there should be there has to be a strong relationship between the citizens and the state sometimes there is a tendency to brand those people who talk against the ideologies of a nation as anti-nationals for example if you talk about the policies of America well you become uh, branded as an anti-American and similarly you know you can find that you can see the same trend in different nations nationalism now, nationalism was the cause of most of the genocide of the 20th century you know large-scale killings it was because of this one uh, idea called nationalism well those who have criticized the actions of the US government they have been branded they have been called anti-American uh, Arantadi Roy quotes the names of scholars, several scholars who were branded as anti-American for criticizing the American policies. She compares the concepts of anti-American and the anti-Indian, emphasizing the same basic idea. The second section, it was a mistake. It was a mistake on her part, she admits, well, it was my mistake, to dismiss the post-September 11 rhetoric as foolish. Well, actually, the post-September 11 rhetoric was a recruitment drive for a dangerous war, the dangerous war that America had intended. Well, she says war. War is a terrible thing, a terrible violent thing, a terrible violent thing that a state can do to its people. War brings nothing but loss. She quotes several examples, for example, Chile, the American war against Chile. In Afghanistan, Iraq, Japan, Guatemala, 
Costa Rica, and so many other instances she quotes. The military interventions by the U.S. in many parts of America, Asia, and Palestine, they have resulted in, in massacres. When Israel attacks Palestine, when there is an, an attack, when there is a war in, in that, in that uh, Middle East, well, remember, it is the American missiles that smash through Palestinian homes. Why? Because, you know, they are allies. It was the 9-11 attack that uh, uh, President George Bush had openly declared war against Iraq. Section 3. The U.S. government says democracies are being undermined. Democracies are, you know, being threatened. After the invasion of Kuwait by Saddam Hussein, he became, that is, Hussein became the enemy of the U.S. The U.S. has the largest arsenal, largest arsenal of nuclear weapons in the world. It is the only country in the world to have actually used the, these weapons, these weapons of mass destruction on civilian populations. Why are wars fought? Why is there a war? She says, wars are fought for hegemony. It is for, it is for power. It is for supremacy. It is to, to gain control over other nations for hegemony, for business. For example, oil. Oil keeps the free market rolling. It is oil that keeps the free market rolling. Now, whoever controls world's oil? Well, that nation controls the world's market. Now, if you can control, if you can get control over the world's oil, well, you will be able to control the world market. The Middle East especially has two-thirds of the world's oil reserves. This justifies, this is the reason why the U.S. government, you know, is always patrolling there. Now, Roy says that America's other weapon is a free market, that is a new form of invasion a new form of attack and the colonizing people, the free market. Then here's the last section. Roy talks about the darker side of globalization. Development projects, the so-called development projects. Well, massive privatization and the labor reforms. These are pushing people off their lands, out of the job, the, throwing people out of, their, out of their lands, throwing people out of their jobs. It results in barbaric dispossession. Dispossession. Dispossession of, possession of the people, throwing people out of their lands. That has few parallels in history. It is unparalleled, something unparalleled. This can also lead to political unrest as it affects the sovereignty of nations. Roy winds up a lecture by saying that power, unlimited power, it has a shelf life. It has a short span of life. When the time comes, she says, the mighty empire, the mighty empire of America will explode, will implode from within, it will collapse. The American style market capitalism is like the Soviet style communism and it is sure to fail. Both, that is the American style market capitalism and the Soviet style communism, both are edifices, a huge structures constructed by human intelligence. And they will certainly be undone by human nature. And this is how she ends the essay. Well, here are the short answer questions. The first, there are nine short answer questions, and here is the first one. Question number one. Writers imagine that they cull stories from the world, that it is actually the other way around. It is not writers selecting stories. It is stories selecting uh, writers. Stories cull writers from the world, explain. Well, Roy says, I don't think Roy says that writers usually imagine that they cull, they select stories from the world. In fact, it is not like that. It is the other way around. It is stories that cull writers, that select writers from the world. Uh, now, stories reveal themselves to us. It is stories, the events, the things that happen around us, they influence us, they reveal themselves to us, and they colonize, they colonize us. They commission us, they ask us to publish them. They commission us, they insist, even insist on being told. Please tell, tell me, tell about me, 
tell them about, about me to the two world it is this is what the events tell the writers so it is not writers who call the world it is actually the other this stories that call the writers it is stories that uh, select the writers question number two how does post september 11 rhetoric become a recruitment drive for another dangerous war Arindhati Roy says that she did a mistake she did a mistake of taking the post september 11 rhetoric as foolish she thought it was foolish but now Roy realizes that the initial aims of the wars have changed because when the wars were started they they had a proclaimed aim now as the war proceeds and the, as the war progresses well goal posts have been moved they have different objectives they have different aims it is actually a recruitment drive for another dangerous war now the third question what was saddam hussein's greatest sin according to roy what is the sin that saddam what is the wrong what is the mistake what is the sin that saddam hussein committed now in 1990 while invading kuwait saddam hussein made decisions independently this is the mistake that he did he made decisions independently without permissions from his master without from permission from the from the from the from the us he didn't consult the us this is the mistake that he committed this was his greatest sin now question number four discuss the irony of george bush's assertion that the us is the most peaceful nation on earth this is what george bush used to say the us the united states of america is the most peaceful nation on earth now it is ironic as far as she is concerned and the roy says that the irony it she highlights the irony by pointing out that the us has been at war us has been at war with one country or another every year for the last five decades this is what she says so there was no time when the united states were not in war with some country or other in the last five years and then george bush says well the united states of america is the most peaceful nation on the earth this is the irony question number five why is controlling the world's oil reserves central the most important thing to the u.s foreign policy because she says oil keeps the free market rolling whoever controls the world's oil controls the world's market the middle east has two-thirds of the world's oil reserves and this this is the reason why this is why the u.s government you know the u.s government's paranoia is paranoid patrolling it is always patrolling there you know walks uh, up and down in the middle east because that place that geographical area has got the two-thirds of the world's oil reserves question number six what is the consequence what is the consequence of the free market on developing countries america's free market how does it affect the developing countries the poor countries now free market is america's new way of war it's a, it's a new weapon it is a perfect vehicle for the endless expansion of its imperialism across the world the free market protects western markets the free market is only for protecting the western market the american market and forces free market forces developing countries to lift their trade barriers as a result what happens the poor countries are getting poorer and the rich countries are getting richer now question number seven why is the american way of life not sustainable she says now this american life it is not sustainable it is not going to last forever why according to roy well the american way of life is not sustainable because it doesn't acknowledge it is america is not ready to acknowledge that there is a world beyond america as far as america is concerned as far as americans are concerned well there is only one nation in this world that's america there is no world outside america question number eight what are the three most secretive institutions dominated by the u.s by the u.s that run the world today well these three secretive institutions are number one the monetary international monetary fund imf 
the World Bank, number two, and the third one is the World Trade Organization. Well, these are the these are the three weapons, three institutions dominated by the U.S. and the decisions there, the decisions of the International Monetary Fund, at the World Bank and the World Trade Organization. Well, they are very very secret, and nobody knows, nobody knows anything what happens inside their politics, their beliefs, and their intentions. Nobody knows. Well, these three arms, these three institutions are controlled by the U.S. International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and the World Trade Organization. Now, this is the last question. What future does Roy foresee for the U.S.? Well, she foresees a, a future and now when the U.S. is going to the American state market capitalism will certainly collapse. It is going to collapse. This is what she says, like uh, the Soviet style communism. The Soviet style communism failed because why it allowed too few people to too few people to usurp too much power. Well, power was in the hands of very few people, a few people. 21st century American style market capitalism will fail for the same reasons. Because Soviet style communism and the American style markets, uh, the American style market capitalism, both are structures, both are edifices, edifices, structures constructed by human intelligence, and certainly they are going to be undone by human nature. So these are the short answer questions. And here are the paragraph questions. There are five. The first one. How does Roy expose the dangers of militant nationalism? The dangers of militant nationalism. Well, if you if you if you start criticizing American policies, you are branded as anti-American, anti-national. This is not a healthy way of life. This is not a healthy idea. This is not a good idea. Well, nationalism was the cause of most of the genocide, the massacres, the killings, large-scale killings of man of the 20th century. Flags, as far as she is concerned, as far as you know, identity Roy is concerned, flags are bits of colored clothes, pieces of colored clothes that governments use to shrink wrap, to cover, you know, in, in uh, for example, in supermarkets you can see Cauliflower, the vegetables covered by a thin sheet of a thin film of plastic that is shrink wrapping, shrink covering, shrink wrapping. So, flag is something a piece of cloth that governments use to shrink wrap people's brains. Number one, number two, then to shroud, to cover, to bury the dead bodies. When civil unrest is expressed through marches, if there is a, a march, a protest march, for example. If there's a demonstration, well, you are branded as a terrorist. You are branded as an anti-national. Well, they are and such people are dealt with as such. Unfortunately, such incidents, it leads to more crime and chaos, more confusion and all kinds of despair and disillusionment. Gradually, what happens? It becomes a, a very good fertile ground, a fertile breeding ground for terrible things, for example, Cultural nationalism, religious bigotry, religious fundamentalism, fascism, and terrorism. These things are born as a result of this. It is, you know, they are born as a result of uh, such disillusionment and despair. Question number two How does Roy decry, how does she condemn the US military interventions in the world? The U.S. has been in war with many countries for the last several decades. Roy stresses the intervention in Iraq. She says, uh, she talks about the, the, the U.S. intervention in Iraq in the name of Saddam Hussein. Several nations in Africa and Asia have suffered under the U.S. military interventions. Millions of people have been slaughtered mercilessly. She recalls the massacres in Hiroshima and Nagasaki by the little boy and fat man. You remember the two, the two famous bombs, the first two bombs, the little boy and the fat man. They were nicknamed like that. She says, Roy says, all living beings, the earth itself have suffered 
by the US weapons. Question number three. Describe the atrocious erasure of Palestine by Israel. Palestine has been erased, removed from the face of the earth. Describe the atrocious erasure. The Israel-Palestine rivalry has been in attention for several decades. It has been going on for several, several, several years. Winston Churchill, in 1937, justified Israel's hatred towards Palestine. Young Palestinians, young Palestinians who could who could not control their anger, what did they do? They turned themselves into human bombs, suicide bombers, and they haunted Israel streets and public places, blowing themselves up, killing military people. Now, uh, Roy says, eventually both societies, both the Palestinian society as well as the Israel society, you know, their suspicion and the mutual hatred of each other hardened. Each bombing, each bombing in Palestine invited merciless reprisal, a, a, merci, a merciless, you know, revenge. Roy says that suicide bombing is an act of individual despair. It is not a revolutionary tactic on the part of part of Palestine. It is an act of it is an act born out of individual despair. The Palestinian attacks provided a, the perfect cover for Israeli government's daily war against the Palestine. When Israel attacks Palestine, remember, it is American missiles that smash through Palestinian homes. Why? Because Israel and the US are military friends, military allies. Here is question number four. How does the free market undermine democracy? Free market, is it, it, it undermines democracy. It kills democracy, it spoils democracy, it destroys democracy. Free market is America's new way of war. It's a new weapon, free market. It is the perfect vehicle for the endless expansion of its imperialism. Across the world, the free market protects Western markets. The free market protects only the Western markets. It is not good for the developing countries and forces developing countries to lift, to remove their trade barriers as a result, what happens? The poor countries are getting poorer and the rich countries are becoming richer. Oil, it keeps the free market rolling. Why? Because whoever controls the world's oil controls the world's market. The Middle East has two-thirds of world's oil reserves. This justifies the US government's paranoid patrolling in the Middle East. Question number five. Roy's speech. I don't see Roy's speech, despite its portrayal of grim realities, ends on a note of hope. It ends on a note of optimism. Uh, elucidate. Discuss. I don't see Roy says that the US government has not succeeded in establishing good relationship with the power and the powerlessness. America's corporate heart is already on the brim of destruction. It is about to to uh, to collapse she, she foresees roy foresees the failure of the 20th century american style market capitalism the american american style market capitalism is going to collapse she says another world of peace is on the way it is going to be born roy winds up a lecture by saying that power unlimited power it has a short span of life a shell shelf life so when the time comes, this mighty empire, it will implode, collapse from within. The American style market capitalism is, is like the Soviet style communism. Both these, both the American style market capitalism and the Soviet style communism, both are structures, structures, edifices constructed by human intelligence and they'll be undone by human nature. That's the end of the paragraph questions. And here is an essay based on her speech come September. Critically assess the deliberations of on the various socio-cultural and political issues of contemporary times. There are five, the essay is arranged in five paragraphs. Paragraph number one, introduction. Come September is a lecture. Identity Roy delivered on the 18th of September, 
2002 at the Land and Foundation in Santa Fe in New Mexico, the United States. It is a scathing attack on cor corporate globalization, U.S. foreign policy, and the so-called war against the terror. Roy is attempting to expose the real terrorist waging an unequal war against its opponents under the cover of preemptive strike against terrorism. Paragraph number two. Nations, countries, engage in deliberate distortion of the idea of nationalism for their own ends. Well, they distort the idea of nationalism. If you talk about uh, a country, you become an anti-national. If you talk, if you, if you if you criticize America, you become an anti-American. Well, Roy says, flags. What are flags? As far as she is concerned, as far as Roy is concerned, flags are bits of colored cloth that governments use first to shrink wrap, or to wrap to cover people's brains or to cover the dead bodies. When civil unrest is expressed through marches, when people take out marches, protest marches, demonstrations where they, the protesters, are labeled as terrorists. Unfortunately, it leads to more crime and chaos. Well, this is what produces, you know, more problems in the, in the world. Finally, it becomes a very good fertile breeding ground for terrible things, such as cultural nationalism, religious fundamentalism, fascism, and terrorism. These things are born out of such crime. Paragraph number three. Roy says that nearly 3,000 civilians lost their lives in the lethal terrorist attack, the terrorist strike on 9-11, on September the 11th. The grief is still deep. The tears, they are still wet. They are still fresh. The tears have not dried. A strange, deadly war is raging around the world. She says, Roy says, that those who have lived in a democracy, like her, would find it very difficult, very hard to imagine what living in a dictatorship means. You know, what life under a dictator, what life is like. It is very difficult for us to imagine what enduring, tolerating the absolute loss of freedom means. What does it mean? Loss of freedom. What does it mean? It is very difficult for us to, to imagine. Paragraph number four. Roy portrays the horror, the horror of massacres that happened across the world, including Israel-Palestine war, the Iraq-Kuwait war. She says that Saddam Hussein and bin Laden are only lame excuses, lame excuses put forward by the U.S. for their fight for hegemony, for their fight for supremacy in the world, to control the world, protecting its control of the world's oil is the most significant thing as far as the U.S. foreign policy is concerned. Nowadays, imperialism has started its expansion through globalization and free market. And here is the last paragraph. Roy winds up her lecture by saying that power has a shelf life, a short span of life. When time comes, the mighty empire will implode. It will collapse from within. The American-style market capitalism is like the Soviet-style communism. Both these are structures, edifices, constructed by human intelligence, undone by human nature. Well, this is the end of our discussion uh, of Anthony Roy's famous speech come September. Thank you very much.